Well, hello there, it is time for Cup of Hope. I am Stephanie Winslow and I'm so grateful to be with you this morning, bringing to you a message from the Word of God. We know that the Word of God is our source of every hope. It's our source of life, our source of peace, our source of comfort. And so when you go to the Word of God, when you spend time in His presence, there is no doubt that you will not receive um, from him. He will always give you just what you need. He knows you in, in your need even better than you know yourself. He knows your need before you ask, before you come to him. He already, he already knows and he's working out a plan and a path that honestly we get to discover and we get to be a part of that journey. So I am just thrilled to be back with you this morning uh, and talk about something that I believe can change our relationship with God. Um, we are walking through the Ten Commandments, and so today we're going to be on the Third Commandment. Um, these first, I believe it, the first four are really focusing on God and who He is and our relationship with Him, and really the, the impact that that can have. So before we get started and dive into the scripture, let's lift up our cups to God and ask him to fill us up with the hope that he has in store for us today. I know that God has a lot in store. Um, as I was studying for today, this uh, I just had this overwhelming sense of uh, this, there's a need for this message. There's a need for an understanding of this message. So in the last two days, we've talked about thou shall have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. So we're not to, to worship anything but God. God tells us also in his word that he is a jealous God. And so the second commandment is that we are not to make any graven image so that there should, there should be no idols in our life, no things or people in our lives that we give our homage and respect to um, above God. So everything else needs to fall in alignment that we are singularly focused on who God is and singularly focused on him being our God, recognizing where all of the good gifts come from, that everything happens in our life um, that he has ordained and predestined it. Uh, he, he knows what's going to happen in our lives so we can trust in him. So thou shalt have no other gods before me. And um, the second one is that we aren't to make any idols and set any idols up in front of him or, or above him. And today we're going to talk about misusing the name of the Lord and the importance of this commandment. Deuteronomy 5.11 says this, do not misuse the name of the Lord your God, because the Lord will not leave anyone unpunished who misuses his name. This one has, you know, the, it tells you exactly what the, um, the result of misusing his name is. It's that there will be punishment that goes along with misusing his name. A lot of the other translations, King James, or uh, there's several others that don't use the the phrase misuse. They use the word um, in vain. So do not um, take the name of the Lord your God in vain is how I learned it as a child. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's the King James Version. Um, so that this in vain word or the to misuse i don't think that we are clear at least in the circles that i'm a part of because even within christian circles people who are years of of believing uh in god often misuse his name by and i guess let me back up and misusing his name in in a flippant way so I believe really, uh, I, I'm gonna tell you the kind of the punchline now, it's that we need to, to kind of get right, get our minds right about the, the, the reverence of God, who he is, the, just his very name 
carries power. His very name has, has the ability to, to transform nations. His very name has the ability to raise people from the dead. His very name has the ability to bring healing and restoration. His very name carries power. The Israelites understood this to a point that they wouldn't even utter his name and they wouldn't spell it out. They used symbols to spell it out, leaving leaving out the vowels. They only would write the consonants because they recognized how powerful his name was, that in his very presence, a person would be put to death because his, just his glory is too big. It's too powerful for our, um, our bodies, <laughs> our humanness to take on. We can't withstand being in his, his unveiled presence, right? It's just, it's too powerful for us. And so his very name carries that kind of power. And so when we misuse it and just flippantly say, oh God, you know, and, or um, I even hear people often misuse Jesus Christ, misusing his name, like as, as a curse word, or as just like, almost <laughs> like just flippantly using it without, without meaning, without, even being really cognizant of what we're saying, we just misuse it. Um, it's just to, almost to fill the space or just <laughs> to say something. Um, and, and yet we don't recognize or understand the power that that name holds, the power that this name holds. And I believe for us church that we have uh, an opportunity here today and as we're walking through these Ten Commandments to really reset our vocabulary, reset our words, reset how we are actually using the name of the Lord. That when we speak his name, that we're, we recognize that we're speaking with authority, that we're speaking uh, in, in such a way that, that it, again, it, it ushers in healing, it ushers in the power of God, that we aren't just saying his name for, for no reason that we're saying it with intention, that we aren't misusing his name. But this word, let me get back to this, that in vain literally means do not lift the name of the Lord with emptiness. Do not lift the name, do not speak the name of the Lord with emptiness. Meaning that again, we're just, we're frivolously using it. Vanity, so that we can puff up ourselves to make us look holy because we're using the name of the Lord, that we're saturating what we do using the name of the Lord, that if he isn't in it, that we don't claim that he's a part of it. So we need to be very careful about what we lay claim, the, the Lord's name, let it claim that thing that we're, we're working on or that we're doing. We need to be very careful about how we're using his name and what we're connecting his name to because when we're connecting his name to a cause or a political party or to a, a candidate or to um, a, a, you know, a school or anything that we're a part of, anything that we're doing, our job, what, whatever it is that we're doing, what we're uh, being about, anytime that we connect that, uh, his name to that, um, we need to make sure <laughs> that it is absolutely in alignment with him and, and that he's actually told us to connect the two things. Um, otherwise, we, we might be misusing his name, and then the result of that is a punishment for us, that there will be some sort of punishment that comes from that. Um, so let us not lift his name or speak his name with emptiness, vanity, and then the third thing is falsehood. Falsehood, so we aren't to use his name and lay claim to something that is false. And how often do we do this? Again, just because we're flippantly saying his name, we're just not even aware. It's just become a, a rote part of our vocabulary that maybe we've grown up in an environment where just, that we just use like, uh, you know, like how I use the word like or um, or, you know, just it's a part of vocabulary that it's, it's we aren't even aware of the power of the name that we're speaking. And so that's my prayer for us, that we, our hearts today would be broken for how we have misused his name. Our hearts would be broken because we haven't understood that we have so misused his name, that we have so 
spoke in his name with emptiness, not recognizing and giving him the glory that he is due, that our hearts would be broken because we don't understand the reverence that he is, he is due. We don't understand the awe that he is that he requires because he is the God of all things. That his very word speaks things into existence. He created us. He created us by speaking life into us, you know, just breathing the breath of life into us. He's, he spoke the world into existence by uttering a word. That is the God that we're talking about. And so when we misuse his name, it's just wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong because we don't understand the, the importance of the name of the Lord that we are um, in relationship with. We don't understand. I think if we did understand the, the power that his name carried, then that would also help those first two commandments. Um, that it would help us to, to follow those first two commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me, and thou shalt make no graven images. And then um, this one, that we shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. We shouldn't use it and speak it with emptiness. You know, we shouldn't treat his name as, as useless or just like we're saying a, a, somebody else's name. It, we aren't the same. It's not the same. Our God requires our God requires our reverence and our respect. And it's time that we, as a church, especially as a church, that we recognize the authority that his name carries. And we also recognize the importance of us giving him the awe and respect. It's no wonder that the world around us doesn't give him the awe and respect that he deserves because we don't treat him that way. As believers, we don't give him the awe and respect that he deserves. This command ends with a promise of punishment, yet even we as believers, we seldom recognize the power of his name. So my prayer for us today is that God would increase in us the understanding of reverence for him and his name. That he would bring us to our knees, that he would show us his power, that his what we read about in the scripture that it would just come alive to us and we we are broken because of how we have see in our own lives that we have misused and represent, misrepresented him and his name that we've just spoken his name flippantly without a care or concern just using his name to say something and not recognizing or harnessing the power that comes when we speak and utter his name and when we come to him in prayer and use his name then those prayers almost seem cheapened because of how we've mistreated his name in the past. So let us come before his throne. Let us ask for forgiveness for those times when we have misused his name and we've just spoken it flippantly um, without, again, recognizing its power. Uh, and then, again, just help us to, to enter into a deeper level of understanding that today we can go forth with a new understanding, with a deeper understanding of his power and the reverence that he so deserves because he is the Lord Most High, the one and only true God, the living God who saves us, who gives us eternal life with him, who created us. He is due every ounce of worship and adoration that we can give to him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I come before you this morning. Um, with a broken heart. With a broken heart, Lord, because I recognize that there have been so many times in my life where I have I have misused your name. I have spoken your name with um, without uh, the understanding or the, the reverence and respect that you are given. And Lord, I've connected you to things that aren't really in alignment with you or whether it's my um, my own personal agenda or an agenda that I've wanted to connect myself with, Lord, I, I pray, Father, that you would, would just illuminate those areas of my life when I have misused your name. I pray that for also over my brothers and sisters, that we would just have a heart of repentance here and now for these, um, for how we have misused your name, Lord. 
And Father, I pray that you would forgive us for, the, for those times when we have misused your name. I pray that you would, again, just through your word and through our time with you and meditating over the scriptures, that you would show us those areas of our lives when we have misused your name, but also show us your power. Remind us, Lord, of your power. Remind us of the, the reverence that we are to have for you. Remind us of the blessing that comes when we do surrender to your name, when we do submit to your power, and when we do speak your name, and when we speak your name in its true and right way, that the power that comes with that, Lord, your very name brings life. Your very name brings healing. Your very name brings peace. Your very name brings comfort. And Lord, sometimes when I, in my life, when I was in those moments where I just didn't know what else to say, the only thing that brought me peace was just to utter your name. To say, Jesus, 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 because there was nothing else that would satisfy. There was nothing else that would bring comfort. There was nothing else that would bring peace. But only you, Lord Jesus, only your name. So Lord, would you break our hearts today? And would you help us to have a posture of surrender before you so that when we speak your name, it carries weight, it carries meaning. Lord, change our hearts and change our minds, change our vocabulary. Lord, shake us free from that vocabulary of the pattern of behavior of just using your name as, a, as just another word. Denying you of its power, denying your name of its power. I thank you, God, for all of this, and I pray blessing over each and every home. I pray uh, your Holy Spirit's presence in each and every home and where there is a division and dissension and within homes, God, I pray that you would bring restoration where there is brokenness. I pray that you would bring about um, restoration where there is uh, cracked foundations. Lord, I pray that you would come in with your tools and, and, and trowel and, and bring about a, a fresh and renewed foundation. Help us, Lord, to build our lives on a firm foundation that is your word in Jesus Christ. I thank you for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with me this morning. Um, I pray that you have a blessed day and I will see you back here on Thursday. Bye-bye.